Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our library second research data management seminar. My name is Peng. I am the moderator today. Okay, let us take a look at the agenda and see what we have prepared for you. Um, first is a one minute introduction, followed by two um, sharing sessions, which are the key um, uh, part of today's seminar. The first one is on data visualization and data mining, given by Professor Hua Mingxu um, from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. After that is a, a topic on big data, recent development benefits and usage, uh, conducted by Professor Raymond Wong, also from CSE. And then uh, after that is an introduction to uh, resources on data management and a demonstration on the service called Data Space at HKUST by our uh, library colleague, Jackie. After each um, sharing session, there will be time for question and answers. So you can ask your question then. <coughs> Let's walk, uh, let me warm you up with a very brief introduction and on why data management methods. Now take a look at the uh, quotation from University of Manchester, which highlights three elements about research data management. First, it's part of the research process, and its purpose is to make your research efficient and to meet funders' requirements. So it's meant to help you instead of making your life difficult. Good research data management should include secure storage and regular backup to prevent data loss. And I hope you are doing it already. And the data file should come with <coughs> sufficient documentation so that your data can be reused and in the future and also um, shareable if you want to. And they can be understood after a long period of time. And the data should be able we should be able to discover and cite them. And they should also comply with uh, publishers and also uh, funders' data policy. Data are the underpinning elements of research. But we see a lack of awareness and involvement in preserving them. So that's why we're organizing these seminars, inviting our faculty members to come and share their experience and knowledge on different um, key research topics on data. And then make use of this opportunity to convey to you the message that research data management matters to you. So let us go to the first sharing session. Professor Chi, please. Thanks for coming for the talk, I mean, especially at the lunch time. Okay. Yeah, okay, so thanks for coming to the talk, I and mean, especially at the lunch time. So my talk is about the data visualization and the data management. So you may know that big data is now a hot topic, right? So our university has a big data platform, we have a big data institute. This is some big data platform we propose. You see from the application domain, you have web data, city data, financial data, logistic data, and also, of course, the research data. Then from the data, we do the data extraction, data integration, put it into the data library, and have some database to manage it. So I think Professor Raymond will talk about the database part. Then after that, there is I mean, mining and visualization. And then finally, is the different application. So the visualization you think about, it just sits between 
Okay, the visual analytics big data system between the end user, some kind of interface, right? So between all this kind of big data, data stuff with the, the end user. And so you may ask why you need a data visualization. So let's just show you some example. For example, this is a very classic example. There is four different data sets. You see this is the top row has data set one, two, three, four. Then each one is very simple, just X and Y. Give an X value, Y value is changed. If I ask you, okay, what's the difference between these four sets of data sets? So you look at this kind of numbers, you may observe something, but it's still not clear, right? You may ask, said, okay, no problem, we can do data mining. Let's do some statistics analysis, okay? That, okay, this is actually, is, uh, this is designed uh, like this. So even you do statistics analysis, then all this is uh, x variance, x mean, and uh, y variance, y mean. And also you do regression, it's always the same, exactly the same. And, but if you look at the data visualization, that is one second is immediately clear, right? So what's the difference between four data sets? You compare this one, this is a number, and this is visualization. So how powerful visualization to convey? A lot of information in a very short time period. And so what is exactly data visualization? So data visualization is that the input is the data, the output is some zero form, but output is not the purpose. So purpose is try to let you gain insight into the data. For example, this visualization shows, okay, this is just a US president, I mean, election. And uh, this is the US map, they have 50 states. And uh, you have this kind of uh, arrow, red arrow means, okay, this state is turned more to republic. The left arrow means, okay, in the past four years, okay, this state is turned more to, I mean, Democrat. Then you look at this one, immediately a lot of information found out, right? So you see a lot of states turn to republic. And also we see this is all this kind of state, the same thing, this middle and uh, western, I mean, states. And there are a few, I mean, this is the blue line, right? So this one is turned more, I mean, Democrat is just in this city area, right? You know, this is Los Angeles, in New York, and uh, so this is a viral form, and the inside, okay, is just like this, okay? Because Trump made a large gains across rural America, that is defeat Hillary Clinton. So this is the inside. The data is a collect a lot of this kind of data in the past four years. The visualization is a map with this arrow shows the trend. Then the inside, okay, this is how Trump wins. So this is the visualization is play a very important role in data analysis, data management. For example, in tool one two, the the Clinton, okay, White House have a, a release on this big data plan. That is especially they mentioned the two million US dollar grant. This grant is just to help train this college student to use I mean, data visualization graphical way to analyze data. You think about why? Because there are so many different kind of data. There is uh, so many I mean, different applications. You cannot rely on this domain experts, rely on computers to do anything. If, if a college student, even uh, in the future high school student, is trained to use this kind of visual, very intuitive way to analyze data, then you have the data, you have different visualization tool. Everyone can apply this tool to the data, become a detective to find what is the story behind the data. And then you think about it, okay, this kind of solution is leverage both the computer and also human. So this is some kind of crowdsourcing, but you need a tool, right? So the visualization is a tool to, to solve I mean, this problem. And also this last year, so this White House released another R&D plan. This is called the National Artificial Intelligence Research and Development Strategic Plan. So AI is a very hot topic. They list the seven strategies. The strategy two is about to develop effective method for human AI collaboration. So AI is powerful, but it cannot do anything. And also, in many scenarios, AI is optimized for, for this best case scenario, or average case scenario, but not the worst case scenario, like a self-driving car, right? So AI system works very fast. But suddenly if, some, if this system fails, then human needs to take over. Then how you do this? You need some kind of interface, right? That's a very complicated scenario. And also many decision making. You need a lot of data. And if AI system fails, always in time critical situation, AI cannot get a timely I mean, uh, uh, results. The human needs to make a decision. Now how you do this? So you need a visualization to present all this kind of data. Then it's in, in, come to the decision maker. Then they just use their domain knowledge to make decision. So this is the thing you see here. Develop techniques for visualization, AI human interfaces. 
So the reason is this visualization can convey a lot of data to, to I mean, the decision makers. I think this talk is not general about the, the, the data visualization. So I think if you search on the web, there are a lot of this kind of things talk about the data visualization. So this shows, okay, how PMD present the data to decision makers. I think in the future, this decision making will do like this in a room, and this room has this kind of uh, display screen shows all this kind of data, but it's present in a, in a very intuitive way. And so that decision maker consume a lot of data and so can make decisions. Also, another reason in the past, right, you think about your, your decision making, you prepare some chart report, send it to your, uh, your I mean, advisor or send it to the CEO. But then now the data is so large, you say, okay, this is your, your chart is okay, but I want to look at the, uh, that data at a specific amount. Oh, it's one to find the correlation of these two variables. Now, how you do it? You cannot go back, right, to prepare chart again, right? So we have this kind of interactive data visualization system. You can immediately just do interaction, change your parameter, and then you can get okay the analysis you want, right? So this is why it's become so powerful. <clears throat> so at this HQ, HQSC, we have a data visualization lab. Now it's about have twenty students work on many different topics. We work on this MOOC analysis, then we work on this urban informatics, and the social media, we also work with the WeChat to develop data visualization to analyze how information diffusion in the WeChat platform, and also medical stuff. So I think is uh, this is not a, some I mean, comprehensive I mean, introduction of our work. Next, I just show you a few demo we developed, I mean, actually collaborate with library and to see how this uh, the data and the visualization can be used to help a PD student to do their some I mean, uh, decision making. For example, when a student go to a university, and first you want to choose an advisor, right? And also you want to know your advisor's research style. And the next, okay, you said, okay, in my department, for example, computer science, I have 200 students, PD students. You want to know, know their career path, right? So how long they typically stay in the program? Now, what is the, the ratio of female and male? And also, uh, what's their research topic? And uh, something like that for each advisor and what kind of, uh, how their research topic change over years. The last one, okay, as a PG student, you want to present a paper, right? You read a paper, the paper has this kind of citation, that right? you, you read the related work. You see some, I mean, paper cited. So you may want to know, okay, how many times this paper cited? Is really I mean, a seminal paper, important paper uh, uh, in, the, in your field. So all this kind of information is data you need to collect somewhere, analyze it, and present to you, right? Then it can help the student have this kind of research career. So let's say, okay, first, for example, you go, go to HQSC, right? You, 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 maybe if the first year student, someone no longer, uh, haven't have an advisor yet. Or you have an advisor, may want to change your advisor, right? So whatever reason, okay, then okay, our library do an excellent work. So they have this called the scholarly publication data set. If you click it, then they collect, the, collect all this kind of information here. So if you see here, okay, this one is shows, okay, the, the, the uh, professors here you can search anyone. For example, you can search my name. Okay, then you, you, you can find okay, my profile. And this is my profile. If you click it, then you'll say, okay, this is my publication. And this is collected annually. And also each PD student, right, would every year they ask you to submit some information like this. That is interesting. You said, okay, how, like, this is, of course, the publications. And also, you want to know, okay, how widely my, my advisor collaborates with other researchers. And how is collaboration change over years? It, it's become more and more diverse, collaborate more and more. Or it's just uh, very stable. You always collaborate with some uh, people. Or in recent years, it's no longer that active. So now you can click this called the co-authorship graph. And this is a graph you see here. Is uh, basically is a graph. This is my picture in the middle. And there is bottom one. You see here there are different circles shows the, the co-author name. And also you see there is this is a number. So it's number one. Means okay, my, this is my, uh, I collaborate only one paper with these people. Two is two people, uh, two papers. That is 25. So I, I collaborate with this guy about 25 papers. 
And also you have this different color. Red one means it's the HQST faculty, I mean a faculty member, and the green one is other HQST member, usually PD student, and, uh, and uh, this uh, green one is uh, uh, outside HQST. Then you see this here gives you a lot of information conveyed in this data visualization, and this is shows the year by year change, right? So what is the number of collaborations? So this one is, uh, looks nice, as you see here, this is powered by HQST this lab, it's something we done, I mean, collaborate with library to develop this kind of tool. Let you understand, okay, for each professor, how this collaboration change over years. And, <coughs> but at the beginning, so let's just use this example to see how usually the visualization is designed. So at the beginning, okay, this is library use this kind of interface, you have one people, and that is always kind of collaboration is like this. So this kind of uh, things, okay, you present something, but actually it's not that I mean, clean, right? It's not that very intuitive. So what is the problem about this visualization? So the layout is some kind of mess up. And they don't use this animation, it's color, and also the strength and the value, and it's hard to read, as you see here. What this means, okay, this is a one number of papers, two number of papers, and also the temporal information, how the temporal change over years, right? So this is the, the original design, just a pump out the figure like this. Then we work with the library and we start to de design something like this. So, okay, so first we have temporal information, this is year by year change. Then you have this kind of time slider. Then this one is basically a solve that problem first. The layout become much cleaner, right? They have circular layout. And also the strength, the high strength, you can see it's clear is here. This is what, and also you have this kind of uh, rank based on this collaboration network. <coughs> but this one still has some problem. So here this is shows, okay, this is a collaboration with uh, other professors, but then it shows the trend, right? For example, it's not clear, okay, I collaborate 25 papers with one author, is in just in several years, or is every year I have one paper, something like that. So we further refine our design. Okay, one design is uh, you can here you basically have this color bar. So this kind of color bar is shows the year. So we start from 1988 then to 2014, and uh, you can basically expand it. Then the different color shows the different I mean the, 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 the year range. Then you see each one you have this kind of color bar. Then you can so okay, how this kind of collaboration, the number of collaboration change over years. You can see it's all the temporal pattern, right? Then you can see here, this one is one paper is just only in this year, in 2000. And this one, you see, this is a spectrum, seems quite even. Then it seems every, I mean, uh, several years have some papers. Then you can see this kind of uh, temporal pattern, right? So this is one design. Another design, we can use this kind of, kind of circular circular design. And you see each, each circular circle, just one year. This is 2000, 2001. And then you can come out with this kind of design. You see, this is 1990, this is okay, this is 2000 and 2010. Then, if that year we collaborated with one paper with that author, you just uh, draw a circle, right? Then this one is also a design, so you can compare this kind of different designs to encode, to present, to analyze this kind of uh, data collaboration uh, network. So you can see the clearly your advisor and uh, who he collaborate, and also how this change over years. But this is just the one, right? Just uh, one person. But how about you said, uh, is there possible to say, okay, compare my advisor with other professors? And also see the trend, so, and any other professor has a similar trend with my advisor. And this one, you need to analyze a group of people, and how they, they collaborate. So let me show you some kind of a demo. We, we use this data set to, I mean, the, to develop. So if you go to my home page, actually I have a few demos there to show, to demonstrate how this is a, the professor collaborating to here. This is the graphs. This is actually the, from our university. I want, to, I want us to analyze, okay, the, the different department, different school, how they collaborate. For example, whether EC and CIC professor are closely collaborate, whether business school and engineer school are, are closely collaborate. So we use that data, scholarly publication data, develop this kind of demo. So each circle represents the color. This is engineer school, and you see here, this is a, a social science. 
and uh, this is the red one is business school, and uh, this is one is humanities. Now, what you found here? You see here, this is an engineer school, right? This is a six department engineer school. This is uh, basically science. You see a lot of labs connect them, right? So I mean, these two schools collaborate closely, and a lot of collaboration going on. Then the humanity and the social uh, business and social science have some collaboration. But you see, the science and the business have no any collaboration, right? So these two schools seem to not interest in each other, right? And the science and the, 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 the engineers, they are so close. And also, even engineer and the business have some collaboration. Then you, even you want to go to the department, you click it, this will go to the department. You see here, this is a ILM, and this is a computer science, and this is the ECE. Then you found here, same as engineer school professors, except you see here, a lot of labs, right? Co collaborate with ECE and the CFE, so all these labs here. And also here, this is a mechanical and the CP, and this is civil, mechanical civil, you see here. This is a collaborate a lot, right, the labs. So engineer school seems to be quite health, I mean, situation. The only difference is the civil and the CSE is not that much, but, uh, but it's okay, and we still have some labs here. If you're interested in specific professor, for example, this is Scary, our uh, professor here, you drop in the center, then you can find who Scary closely collaborated with. This is, the, you see here, and uh, this is ECE, and this is the uh, CSE, so he collaborated things I mean, quite widely, right? And you said, okay, this is a show. Okay, this is a, a different department. How about the professor, if you come here, then this is a computer science professors. And the computer science has six uh, different research area. If you group by area, okay, then you will find okay who in which in each field, which professor actually collaborate widely with other professors. So this is a different research field. You see, this is a database, and uh, this is a database. Uh, this is our Raymond Professor Raymond here, and uh, also this is uh, this is data is relatively old. So this is a networking, and this is a vision graphic. You found my name here. And uh, here, see, I collaborated with professor from uh, database, with professor from network, with professor from system. So it seems to uh, uh, collaborate uh, uh, relatively widely. And who collaborates much more? The average, you see, you found our previous department head is uh, Leno. And you found our, I mean, uh, this is the uh, current department head, Professor Yang Chang. So this is basically say, okay, this is very productive professor also tend to, to, to collaborate widely. Actually in the CMU, so every year they do this kind of exercise and they, they plot this uh, faculty collaboration like this. If, if you never collaborate with anyone, so this, uh, this, guy, this professor is just have no any links with other professors, then the department head will talk to you. So you have a, you have world class co colleagues you never work with them. Now what's the, why you do research at CMU, not other university, right? Then to take advantage of our world class faculties. So you have this kind of visualization. Then so this one our department don't like to put on the web page because you think about some professor is have pressure, right? So this this graph is shows okay the collaboration network. Okay, so this is about the. Uh, this is about the, the collaboration. And we develop a, a system like this. Okay, this system is shows the trend, the trend of the collaboration. For example, this is MTS view. So year by year, the trend is all similar professors are grouped together. And this is a year by year, okay, how this professor's collaboration, even we call the equal network, change over time. And uh, this is basically based on some ranking. Now uh, this is a, a typical system design. You from raw data, you extract the ego network filter into data overview, then you need to have these different analytic tasks. And for example, this is a data overview, you have year by year, 204, 203. Then this one, okay, this year we track different attributes, we use MTS to project that similar professor will form a cluster. Okay, then this one is basically we, we, we count the year by year. This is some kind of statistical strength. For example, how many uh, collaborators this professor has, and what is the strength compared with last year? So last year I collaborated two papers with this 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 guy. Then this year five. Then the the type grow stronger, right? And then this kind of statistic I extract. Then I can use this kind of belief to encode it. 
Now you have this kind of overview, can clearly say, okay, this, this one has this year, this year, these two professors seem to have similar patterns, and all of the green one is new collaboration. So this is, we do a case study, we found this a scholarly publication, we track all these papers, then this different, uh, uh, more than 4,000 equal networks, and we do this kind of visualization. There's some interesting funding. For example, this is show some ECE professors. Now we found one professor, you see here, this is one professor, it's a, uh, it's a, a Russia, I mean from Russia. This professor is do some kind of research on optical. And then you see here, this is a, it's a network a change. Okay, at the beginning, he formed a cluster with group of people. <coughs> then you go this year with this green one, that go to here, and with this yellow one again, yellow one again. Here you see, this is the research patterns. Then you can clearly say, okay, it seems his collaboration network has changed over a year. Then you can find, okay, actually uh, change research uh, direction or whatever. Then the collaboration network has changed over years. And some other professors, you say, oh, this cluster, formal cluster, then you can see they have similar patterns. For example, they tend to collaborate more and more. And also they have few core, I mean, very I mean, stable collaborators. So this one, I think, is uh, shows uh, about choosing advisor, know your advisors, I mean, the research career collaboration. Next, if you want to know, how about the PT student, uh, the careers of the PT student? So you see, this is a, with, with a demo we developed with, uh, for our, I mean, the PT student. So our university, uh, this is computer science, is. Uh, Basically, is a graduate more than 600 graduate students, so PhD as Anfield. And uh, as a student, you want to know, okay, for example, what is a female, what is male, how many years, for example, you need to do a PT defense, right? And in our department, you need to give oral presentation for a, uh, this is called a PQE, proficiency research exam. And then we, we basically is, uh, develop uh, something like this. So all this kind of uh, uh, year program, you have, can choose PhD or MPhil, or PhD or MPhil. If you choose PhD, then they basically say, okay, about 300 PhD students here. Then you can choose the gender, okay? If you, among 300 PhD students, if you choose a female, and uh, then basically it said only 45 female or, or among 300. So in the computer science, the female PhD is only about less than 20%. Then you also can choose a supervisor, right? You can choose a, uh, anyone here. You choose my name, and then you basically come out, okay? And uh, yeah, only two female PhD students. But if you change MPhil, actually it's much more. And so this is uh, the demo, and the next we can combine. So basically it's uh, show a lot of information here, and uh, if you, you see something like this. And it shows, okay, here, this kind of trend. So each year, okay, how many students do the different color, that means either do PQE or do the, the exam. Then you, you click here and do this one. For example, there is a student called Li Xin, and he do his PQE 204. Then he do his defense here. It's basically that the, the, the 200 and here and you see here. For example, this one. If you click it, that directly bring you to this call, I mean the PT defense. You have this PhD qualified exam, and this is abstract, even though what is the advisor's name is there, right? And if you click it, that means a 201 to do this kind of uh, PQE. Then is, uh, is uh, uh, 201, uh, after one year, is to this uh, Anfield thesis defense. So this is Anfield student. And uh, so a lot of information you can basically come here. So this is a uh, uh, male, female, and the, hum, the, the quiz number, and every year, okay, this one is defense, this one is basically is a, either PQE or the defense. And also you can see here, based on different professors, and uh, you can basically take one professor, and uh, for example, the professor, and then you see here, this is basically shows, okay, how many years, and his students usually stay in the program, and uh, something like this. So this is a, uh, the, the demo and basically it is uh, for the student you can find a lot of information and uh, they connect connect multiple I mean uh, connect multiple uh, information together so for example here okay this is shows the supervisor each supervisor how many students supervise this one shows the key key topic okay the keywords what the keywords in your thesis this one it shows the time okay that year how many students 
do their defense PQE, how many female, male, and how many year. Okay, this is uh, basically do the defense. If you click it, then it bring you to the abstract of announcement. So you think about if each department has this kind of tool, then you have a great, good, great overview. Okay, how many students you graduate, the male, female, and how many years you spend, and how many each professor, how many PE students they graduate. If you click that one, it'll bring you to this announcement about their MPL, about the, the, uh, the uh, about the, the, their, I mean, top abstract. So this is about the, the student career. They have this kind of data, all the data collects are public. We put in a database, we develop this kind of interface that every student can access. You can basically is make your own judgment. So the next one I think is, uh, so this is about the, the, the piece. The next one is you want to present a paper, right? So for a research paper, we develop another demo. So this uh, demo is uh, basically is called the waste paper. So this waste paper, we, 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 we develop this kind of interface to help PD students to read the research paper. So we just uh, demonstrate it. You can choose the paper. For example, we choose this paper. We, we pro propose, okay, this help you to read the research paper. We propose this is author-driven, reader-driven, the citation-based, different uh, way to read the paper. So author-based is just uh, you read the paper, I mean, uh, based on the, how the paper is written, okay, it's from introduction, related work, and all is going on. Then for each part, we extract the key information, all augment the presentation. For example, the, for this paper, right? And for this paper, what is the citation? And uh, for this paper, when, uh, how many times is it mentioned? Also the similarity, for that paper, you know the whole paper PDF, you know the uh, keyword. Then you can do this kind of uh, analysis, say, whether, how, what is the, uh, the overlapping of that paper with your paper? And also, this is reader driven, you can directly ask a few questions. Then our system will directly answer you. And this is a citation based. For example, when you read a paper, you want to figure out what is the, the seminal paper in the field, right? So if you read a related way, work, work. this is a, what this paper, okay, right now. You can, you can click it, it's bring you to the PDF. And uh, this is shows the related work, and uh, this is uh, uh, the different section of related work. This shows all the paper is discussed in your related work. You can highlight it. Okay, this is the uh, shows the paper name. For example, this paper and the title, the visual display of quantitative information, the the size in code what in code. Okay, how many times this paper has been cited? So the bigger that means this is more important. This is cited more. And also the color means, okay, how is this paper, the, the, the sentiment? That means when the related work discuss this paper, whether it's agree or disagree. If negative, that means in this related work, when discuss this paper, they're more critical. That this paper have this drawback, have that limitations. If the positive one is, it basically is more great. For example, this paper, now you click it, okay, this paper when in the related work part, when discuss this paper, the author seems it's quite I mean, a great, as this paper has done great work and have a, a pioneered some uh, research. And this links, basically, is all the paper, the citation between the paper you're citing. That means, for example, this paper, that means it's cited this, this, this other form. Yeah. So you see, if you have this kind of visualization tool, a lot of the information integrated into this system. When you read your paper, our system directly pump you out do a lot of this text analysis, citation analysis, and can facilitate you to read the research paper, right? In the future, this each paper automatically generates something like this. When you read paper, you can go to our system, then can have all this kind of information. We use big data text analysis to bring it to you. I think it is because of limited time, so I just uh, uh, use this three case study to show, okay, this is uh, what is the uh, data visualization and how it to help students to manage uh, the, the, you know, the publication data. So basically, as I talk about what is data visualization, why it's important in big data area, and then I use three case study. First, how to choose an advisor, then your advisor collaboration network, how this collaboration change over time, how the different department, different professors collaborate, and the second one is about the career of a PE student. So all these public data, we collect them, and then we put it into a system. Then you can see all the students graduated, 
And when they do the defense, and when they do the PQE, the male, female, and they're working to their abstract, the keywords. And for each professor, how many students they should provide. So all this information present in one system. And last one, when you present a research paper, you already will need to find a lot of information by yourself. But uh, we use big data analytics, we show this one to you. Okay, the, the sentiment toward that paper, the citation, and also the, the, the which paper cite which paper. Okay, in this in this book. Okay, so this is uh, just a very high level interview. For more information, you can go to my web page. Uh, all these demos uh, is a is a live demo. There are links. You click it, you can basically check by yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Chu. And um, sorry that we didn't have enough time. Yeah. 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 Uh, but we still have time for questions and answers. Could we, as students, use the tool to generate the results for ourselves? So this is uh, a paper? Or you, uh, to what? use the tool and uh, incorporate our own raw data and generalize the data? Uh, you mean which, which one? Well, uh, I think it's first this professor one is, uh, is already there. If you go to library, any professor you choose your advisor, then that's, that's a visualization there. And for the student why CSE is already, it's already done. But if for other department, I think you can do some similar. The this paper is a little bit tricky. So that one is uh, still a prototype. We, 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 we need uh, still a lot of work to, I mean, for any paper. And we can extract and uh, generate a visualization like this. So it's still an ongoing work. Very sorry about this. So I got a question about uh, visualization in general. So yeah. As we know that um, data cannot be manipulated, but yeah. the way we visualize data by maybe changing the scale on the yeah. chart, it yeah. can be manipulated. And yeah. as a result, we can get different insight. Yeah. So how can we ensure that the way we visualize data can still present a non-biased, objective um, insight? Yeah, I think that this is a very good question. Actually, our whole field, and their research field is actually trying to address this problem. That means that the visualization, when you present the data, how can you guarantee, right, that it's not the distorted? And actually, if you can manipulate this visualization to convey what, whatever message you want, if you search on the web, there is how not to lie with visualization. And then how you do this? Actually, there are different ways. So first, okay, this field has been more than 20 years. And the many years I'm in practice, so they already have some rules down. So when I give a talk, I first start on what is human visual system perception, and there is some kind of rule sum about the visualization design. For example, usually you don't go to 3D because 3D have occlusion, have distortion, perspective stuff. And the bar chart is better than pie chart, or something like that. There is some kind of a rule sum for practice. And also for when you design, develop this kind of visualization, we also need to uh, do some kind of evaluation. So the evaluation usually have three ways. So first, okay, you can basically plug in the data, then uh, present the data, and uh, then see whether they are consistent. If some data you know ground the truth, right? You present it, see whether it's really present well. There are no misleading stuff. And the second one, you can basically uh, deploy this one to the end user, and the user do their daily uh, analysis. They found any problems, said, okay, uh, from your visualization, I found some pattern. Then I look at the data, there's no pattern there. And then this is based on the feedback from end user. And last one, we, we can do this kind of controlled experiment. So we have this kind of visualization, you have a baseline system, then you give them the same task. Uh, same task, same person, uh, same data. And then it's just the one use the baseline system, well established, another use your new visualization. Then you me measure the accuracy and the response time. Then you see your, whether your visualization is really good. Better. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I have a very simple question about the paper citation. There yeah. are three types: the positive, the negative, yeah. and the neutral. Yeah. But we knew we know that in the paper that maybe the paper just mentioned in 2004, there is a paper mentioned about what 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 
So I'm thinking about what's the marker and the keywords you divide these citations to into three different parts, the positive, negative, and neutral. So yeah, I think it's a, this is a, also a good question. So in the related work, some part of they have this kind of discussion. For example, they said, OK, in 2004, they are published a paper like this. However, this paper cannot do this, cannot do that. So this is, you think about it, some kind of more negative, right? Oh, it's a this published paper. This paper is really, I mean, you know, the advanced state of our art, and they basically, that we are inspired by this work. That is, it looks like a more positive, right? If they just mention, don't have any comments, then we basically say, this is a, a neutral. And we do this kind of a text a sentimental analysis. And also we do it, basically, is a, for this work, and this have a PDF file, they have abstract, and your paper has abstract. Then we can do this kind of a, a correlation analysis. Whether these two papers really have some correlation, deal with the same problem or something like that. If highly correlated, then we may can do more and detailed analysis. And there are some different ways to de 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 derive this kind of information. But uh, this is because sometimes it's very short. So it's, uh, the accuracy is an issue. <laughs> so I think it's, uh, well, this one I said is uh, it's not well I mean, tested yet. So we only have those three papers there to demonstrate the prototype. Yeah. Maybe the last question. Do you have some public API real realization applications? Yeah, I think it's now is the one. I mean, very dominant. Actually, it's very easy to use. Uh, usually, for uh, uh, every year, I supervise a lot of students to this uh, Europe. So this semester, I have 10 students. Usually, some are also 10 students. So very easy. There is a tool called D3. So if you click, click it, they give you this is JavaScript, and uh, they give you a lot of sorry about. They give you a lot of I mean the, the examples, and uh, so you see here. If you see some visualization you like it, they provide the source code. You cut and paste, put in your HTML file. You prepare the data based on the. I don't know why it doesn't show up. Maybe browser whatever. So you can check by yourself. So you just search D3, and then, and then this is sometimes maybe Java uh, libraries not loaded. But uh, usually it's up here. You see, this visualization come out, right? And you said, OK, uh, this is my data. I want to show something like this. If you click it, and uh, they basically show you the source code. It's JavaScript source code. And here, you see the source code. The index, uh, you cut and paste. And then there is the data. It okay, describe this is the data. You just prepare your data like this, exactly format. You see CSV. Then this is your data, uh, CSV, and then this is HTML, and you, you, you load it. Then this will show up. So I think also answer that student question whether there's this kind of tool. So you use C3, very easy. So one month you can grasp it. This one actually is that dominant. There's a seventy percent of on the web, all this kind of visualization done by D3. So this is for display? Yeah. But what about computation? Do you use uh, that is Raymond's uh, talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's an expert on the database, data mining. So we focus on the visualization. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chi, for the very inspiring presentation.